Howdy and welcome to Cedar Creek Homestead. This is Howie here and for our weekly porch talk and I hope you're all doing fine and I want to say thank you to all of our loyal subscribers and if you're not a subscriber and would like to be we would greatly appreciate your subscription and want to thank you in advance for it and uh, also if you have a comment or whatever well give that and we I love reading the comments and um, give us a thumbs up there and if you click that little bell icon right beside the subscription button um, it'll ask you if you want to all our videos or certain ones well um, what I select is all if it's somebody I want to be notified and then later when they upload a video because I have uh, probably a thousand this I don't know if this that many but I have a bunch of uh, channels that I am subscribed to and if I go and I like them I subscribe to them that's just how I do things uh, but uh, anyway uh, today I um, it's such a beautiful day I decided we would uh, I'd do another porch talk outside instead of being out in the shop and uh, it is a beautiful day we've had a good year this year now we've had a lot of rain and here lately we've had some very what I call very cold spells where it gets slightly below freezing but uh, tonight they're saying more rain's going to come in and then tomorrow it's supposed to cool down in the 20s and uh, it's kind of like a roller coaster then at the end of the week it's supposed to be back up near 60 during the daytimes uh, lows in the upper 30s uh, but we are going to have uh, at least one night that's going to drop really cool and cold here uh, we're kind of on a line here in Oklahoma where uh, very far north of us can get snow and ice and very cold or a little bit south here it depends and this year could be a year that it moves down a little further we have are about two weeks early for in my opinion for frost and we were about two weeks early for a hard killing freeze too we had a hard frost and a few weeks later we had a hard freeze in both of those I'm estimating about two weeks but in the uh, logistics the um, stati statistics uh, that the National Weather Service keeps uh, that we are in line I mean that we um, from we're in in there where we normally should be at as far as hard freezes and frost but we've been enjoying getting to have later ones and this year that isn't happening we always feel like you need a hard cold freeze and stuff to kill out the bugs but anyway uh, just want to talk to you today a little bit about a subject that uh, is troubling me some as a homesteader and I think it's probably a big threat and not I'm not saying it's the biggest threat but it is a threat against homesteaders and that's this uh, communist and socialist stuff that's being promoted in our land today and I can't believe that there is a presidential candidate that's getting any steam at all, uh, this Bernie Sanders guy that claims to be a socialist. I can't believe that the Democrat Party has went that far, uh, they call it to the left, but it went so far that they're embracing folks that um, are for socialists and communism. And uh, I'm sure they're going to claim their view of socialist uh, to me socialist communism is the same thing I know if you went to great big schools you got some kind of big ex explanations of all that but I don't know of any socialist communist countries that's doing good I have heard recently there's supposed to be one that was that people thought was doing good but actually they've uh, reversed their policies and went on because they weren't doing good so I don't know I've not ever heard the ones I think of is uh, communist country Russia I know they claim they're not communist anymore but uh, maybe the Communist Party isn't in pool there but I think they're uh, uh, not as um, they don't have the freedoms that we have here and used to under the Communist Party they had a very rough time I know when they that all fell there was people that said that you could take uh, when uh, they dropped communism so so to speak but still that uh, they their leader over there uh, even though he's not elected he's still in charge and they're still a uh, dictatorship anyway and I'd say they're still a communist country they're just doing a little different take on it but uh, they uh, 
um, not countries that I want to go live in, and I don't want to go to China. And although I love Chinese food, I don't want to go to China. I don't want to go to Korea. You look at North Korea, they're uh, the only fat person in their country is their president. And uh, he's getting all the food and all the vittles. And no matter how people uh, slice it, you're always going to have poor and you're always going to have the rich. Uh, Jesus told them, said, you always have the poor with you. So to think that somehow we're going to elect a government scheme of some sorts that's going to change that isn't going to work. Now, first off, I want to say something about that. I believe in America. I don't know about these other countries that are like uh, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Canada, Mexico. Um, I don't know how your setup is. But here in the United States, if you're able to work, and you will work, you can make it you can be very successful and end up with a good retirement, end up with a good life. But if you're lazy and won't work, you will not survive good, financially speaking. And those kind of people have to go on some kind of assistance because if you won't work, you're just not going to make it. But if you will work and you'll get out and do it, even though we have taxes and sometimes it seems like the taxes the tax systems against us by the time you pay your federal income tax you pay your social security tax then uh, you pay your state taxes and some cases local taxes plus then you also have sales tax and property taxes by the time you do all that it seems like it's kind of against you but if you'll work and get out there, I think this is one of the greatest countries on earth to be successful and do something. Now, they want to say that there's big gaps in the middle class and the rich. I don't want to be rich. I, I'm not, I have no desire to be like the rich folks. Am I better off than I was? You betcha. I am better off financially than I was, I'm just going to say 10 years ago, I'm better off. Does that mean I'm independently wealthy? Does that mean I don't have to balance my checkbook because I have so much money coming in? It certainly is not. I have to watch my money. I have to watch my P's and Q's. Uh, but it's better. I can tell you my financial status is better. My financial status is better than it was 20 years ago than it was 30 years ago. 26 years ago, me and Stacy got married and we didn't have nothing. We had people gave us furniture. I can't say we didn't have nothing, but we didn't have any means to buy stuff hardly. We were just barely scraping by. But because of hard work and perseverance, we have continued on. When I was a boy growing up here, we absolutely had no money. My parents had no money. If a major tragedy would have come, we would have been in bad shape except for we had one another. And as a family, there was five of us kids Plus, we had uh, relatives that lived here, and if you needed something, we all shared and helped. And one time, uh, someone had turned my dad in, said he had killed a deer illegal, and my dad didn't. He always hunted very legal and by the law, what it said. And there wasn't a lot of deer around here, so we'd hunt during the deer season. In fact, they used to have doe drawings. And we felt like if you didn't kill does, the herd of deer here would populate better. Just like you would cattle, you keep your cows. So uh, my dad would have us all draw out as kids, and everyone done it. My cousins did, aunts, uncles, and draw out for these doe tags they used to have. And you had to mail in and get this little doe tag for free. And they would mail it to you, and then uh, we wouldn't use them because we wanted to build the deer population. But anyway, my dad got turned in for killing a deer illegal, and uh, the game warden stopped down at my aunt's house. So uh, could come up to our house, and the, my dad wasn't home, so he stopped down at my dad's sister's and said, uh, "Hey, uh, trying to look for him." Said, uh, "I got a warrant here to check his freezer," and said he's been reported as killing uh, illegal deer and. Uh, so uh, I hope I said deer a while ago and not beef, but anyway, <laughs> he said, I hope he, he said he's killed a little deer, supposedly, and I got to check his freezer. So uh, my uncle said, well, said, I know he ain't killed no deer illegal. And he said, how do you know? And he said, well, first off, because there's not any of it down here in my freezer. And uh, 
things was uh, rough enough, but we did have beef in the freezer, and my aunt and them did too. And the game warden, when we come home, he seen us go by my aunt's house, and he followed us right down here and went in the old house we had there, and we had an old wash house out side there used to you'd have your washer and dryer in an old outhouse and we had a freezer out there and uh, the game warden opened up one of those bags of uh, uh, meat and my dad had had it commercially processed over here at a place but he cut one of them open with his pocket knife and looked in and mm -hmm. to see I guess if it was really beef or if it was deer meat and uh, but my dad didn't kill anything illegal but the point is we shared and if you needed something, um, I know of times that my dad and mom would go buy groceries, a uh, uh, few groceries for my aunts. Uh, one aunt lived down here, the other one lived back here, a cousin lived here, my grandpa lived around there. But I remember them going and buying groceries for them and bringing in groceries to them and trying to help them. But that was our socialist uh, uh, atmosphere here as you helped one another and that's the way it should still be today and that is the way it is we have uh, there is programs you know the churches here help there's a united way there's uh, the red uh, cross different ones that still do things like that and help but here locally we still help if somebody's in need here locally we've had people uh, just this weekend uh, 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 guys got cancer and they had a big deal uh, for him to help raise money to help with their expenses of going and getting treatments and stuff and they're having a blood drive and that guy's name also coming up this week and uh, they announced at the football game we do things to help but the socialist policies getting back on that where the government forces you and they take your money and it's just my take on it uh, if they if I grow a garden out here and the tomatoes are doing really well and a government man comes by and says we've got to take 90 percent of your tomatoes we're going to leave you 10 percent but we're taking 90 percent um, because you've got too many and we're a socialist government and we're going to take them I don't like it I think that's wrong and this is the point is if somebody comes by my house and I've had people do it and they'd say boy them are nice tomatoes I wondered if I could buy some tomatoes from you and you know um, I don't think I've ever sold a tomato here I've given some away I'm like hey um, come on you help yourself or I'll go pick them for you or if I've already got some picked I'll go get them some I'll say here you take these but to say that they have to and when somebody that's lazy and there's people like this that are just flat out lazy around here. They've got property, they got room, but they don't want to go grow a garden. They want to, want the government to get them a handout. Well, the government never gives you anything. They take from others and forcibly remove it and give to you if you're one that wants the stuff and it's not right. And it would not be right for the government to come and take what isn't theirs to begin with. But it is my right as a Christian to help others is the need. Most people around here that claim they aren't doing well and need help, it's because they blow all their money on other things. There's people around here that'll say, oh, I'm just barely surviving. Oh, I'm just barely making it. Oh, I just can't hardly handle it. And when you go visit them, you see them, they'll have a casino cup in their hand. They've been down to the local casinos. Hey, I have no sympathy for you if you blow your money at the casinos. They also have a uh, you look in the floorboard of their vehicle be full of beer cans and different stuff like that one thing is a lot of those folks uh, will sure have a nice vehicle they'll have satellite TV and cell phones but then they claim they don't have enough money to eat on uh, but what would happen here they think everybody being equal would make things better it would not because people like me, if they come and force you, and it's bad enough now, they take enough from us in taxes that, you know, like here, <clears throat> they voted in and built a big new gymnasium down here. Now, I like the gymnasium. I'm proud for it that the school was able to put that in. Very, very fancy, nice, big, humongous. The whole thing's air conditioned, the big old humongous air conditioning, all this stuff. But you know who's paying for it? We are. They take our property taxes. So a lot of the people around here that voted for it are not even have don't even have to pay property taxes because they rent property, so forth and so on. But people like me, I don't even have my boy don't even go to school. We're not going to get to enjoy the uh, gymnasium now. 
and uh, for our own use you know maybe get grandkids one of these days we will they had a really good gymnasium it was just getting old and they wanted a new one and I'm proud for them that they could but now and uh, sitting here trying to homestead uh, you know uh, settling in here on this piece of property my taxes have gone up because we've got to pay for this big new gym, gymnasium that they have and you know I want them to take care of it too I hope they will and so far they are it's uh, about a year old or so they've been using it I guess they started playing basketball last winter in it but the thing is we're taxed enough on every hand but these new when I was a kid we were taught uh, socialist communism was bad we were taught and said and I've actually studied it a lot about Hitler because it's always surprised me how Hitler came to power and he came to power uh, because of the Treaty of Versailles after the World War One Hitler uh, came into power and uh, uh, because of the treaty that was set at the end of World War One, it really made it rough on the German people. Probably wasn't a fair treaty that they had set up. So then we had um, uh, Hitler rose to power. He started the first social security system. He started jobs for the government, such as uh, uh, doing the uh, uh, oh uh, Volkswagen company and stuff here comes somebody in a loud vehicle and they may not be able to to hear us here or you may not be able to hear us here I don't want them hearing me they don't need to hear me <laughs> if they do they can watch the video but anyhow uh, he started the first Volkswagen you know that started that company so the government would give out jobs and when you study it out he had a bunch of promising things but in the end it gave the government full control and that's what happens in communism and socialism they the government takes over and I certainly don't want this bunch that we got right now uh, ruling over me in fact I used to be a registered uh, Democrat when I first started out and because around here if you didn't there was you didn't get to vote on primaries hardly because there wasn't anybody on the Republican side running now it's just pretty much right the opposite. There's way more Republicans than there are Democrats, and it has totally changed. But it's because of the views. I didn't have nobody tell me I needed to change. I remember when I moved to Missouri and lived up there uh, for a little while, and while I was up there, uh, I was like, hey, I'm going to register as a Republican this time. I've always been a Democrat, but it's gotten to where I can't vote for the Democrats that's running. So uh, on the federal level, now on the local level, it's a little bit different on the state and local. There's been times that I have voted for Democrats and independents. But on the federal level, and now it's gotten so bad, there's no way I would vote for a Democrat on the federal level. It's just gotten way too out of hand and too carried away. But I'm you know, used to, they were the working party. They were for the little man. Now they're for the unions and stuff like that. But for the average old person that's out there working like me, I don't feel their values. Uh, first off, to say they're going to raise taxes. You know, they passed this uh, tax reform deal. This past year was the best we've done in taxes. We made more money, but we had to pay less in taxes because of the new uh, tax law that was put in place. And they say, uh, I heard this Bernie Sanders guy say on day one, He's going to reverse that. He's going to reverse all the environmental laws and rules that Trump has put into place. On day one, he says, I'm going to get rid of all that. And we know how that all works. They usually are so busy with their carnival on day one, they don't uh, um, get, do anything anyway. But the point is, they are promising to reverse things that are actually good for our country. So uh, can they get my support? No. And uh, it just seems uh, very strange. and. Uh, the way they come up with these ideas that uh, we were taught against and our veterans we just having Veterans Day and I think of uh, down here at our cemetery by our church there's uh, graves uh, a lot of them have American flags they've went and put out there because these were patriots that fought for our country and died and they uh, that's what they fought against was communism and socialism and now we have people running in our office, uh, highest office of the land, as President of the United States, running saying that they're openly for communism, they're open for socialism. Uh, this one lady um, uh, that they call, uh, President Trump calls her uh, Pocahontas, 
and she's originally from Oklahoma, and I can't think of her name right now, don't matter. Uh, but she said she wants to tax us 90% and leave you with 10%. And I was like, man, don't they take enough? You know, if 10% is good enough for God, why ain't it good enough for Uncle Sam? That ought to be more than enough money to run things on. But, uh, but it concerns me. And I think as I'm getting older, and a lot of the older people here that was raised, uh, that they were opposed to communism, socialism, those kind of policies have died off. And I'm thinking, boy, in another few years, in fact, I, I really think Trump will get reelected this next election. But I think of the, of the following after that, after he's been in there for eight years, um, Hopefully he'll put in enough judges that are conservatives, enough judges that will support us homesteaders and stuff in his time. Because I think, boy, then they're getting their war chest ready. They are getting ready to go to battle. And it's going to be sad what happens there. And I'm sorry if you're a liberal leftist on the left and you're offended. I'm just giving my personal opinion of what I, I feel about the situation. And, uh, uh, you know... Uh, some say don't get involved in politics. I'm telling you, this is too important not to get involved. The thing that gets me is those that are on the left can be out all they want to uh, and get involved in everything. But us on the right, we're supposed to be quiet and be uh, little church mice and just sit and be quiet and not do anything. But I'm speaking out today and sharing my views with fellow homesteaders. You know, I don't care what they do out otherwise. Uh, but what affects me right here on my homestead, I am concerned about. And when uh, there's some people on the farm show on This Week in Agriculture, you, if you haven't watched that, you may go in and watch it. Uh, Earl M. Samuelson, <laughs> that, the old whitehead man that's on there, he had a deal he was talking about. These, these people are being sued by the Environmental Protection Agency because they are far, plowing their farmland. Plowing used to be a traditional practice that you did instead of spraying with Roundup and stuff like now. They would plow the fields. Well these people still do that and the government is suing them saying that that dirt can run off into the creeks or streams and that is a pollutant. Folks, these are serious matters. Even with Trump, as loose people are, he, they think, with uh, environmental concerns, uh, considering what he's doing and yet um, uh, people are uh, uh, they think he's loose with the environmental laws and rules, but yet uh, and this is happening under his watch. Of course, some say he might step in and do something about it, but this family could lose all they've got if the EPA is successful in finding them for dirt that's run off of their farmland. And what if they... they Roundup, they say, causes cancer. So what if the farmers went back and started using non-GMO? Most of my viewers would say, hey, we need non-GMO. But to do that, you'd have to plow the land again. The no-till practices, no-till works because they come in and spray it with Roundup. That Roundup washing back off in the streams is probably more of a harm uh, to our environment than any dirt that's ever ran off. This land around here was plowed for years and years, hundred, at least a hundred years probably has been plowed, a lot of it under, uh, put under the plow, and it's been here, and I don't think it's hurting things at all. Anyway, there's a little take on what I feel like with this communism and socialism. And like I say, some say, well, you can't do nothing about it. Yes, I can. I can speak up and tell my, my part. And, you know, very easily these uh, things could affect us right here on our homestead. And uh, when they begin to knock on our own back door, hey, it's time to get concerned about what's going on. And uh, most importantly, as uh, Christians we can pray and ask God for his help in this matter and it's almost to the point that it seems like they're into a civil war pattern here in our country and that very much concerns me that there's civil unrest and we've seen the civil unrest in the riots that's been going on mostly it's been on the left they'll have big uh, riots going on for their causes it seems like those on the right are kind of being quiet and and going along with it they're voicing their opinions but not writing one thing is most of the ones on the right are working and they don't have time to go protest like those uh, that are on the left do so <clears throat> anyway it's very concerning and uh, a very scary situation you know we can homestead and prep for food loss for storms and earthquakes and 
fire and floods. We can prep for those things. But it's very hard to prepare for political unrest. Hey, I appreciate you watching today. May God richly bless you. We'll see you next Tuesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, here for Coffee Talk at Cedar Creek Homestead. Hey, God bless you. Have a great day.